fiddly gub day, Danny boy here, we're back with more transport fever on the modern map. We are over here at the uh, St Petersburg Harbour uh, cargo station and we're going to continue finishing off uh, the Russia Asia fuel train or fuel line. Uh, pretty much done, we've just got one train to uh, sort of pipe in and uh, to go to China, to go to Beijing uh, from the harbour uh, just at Tokyo. Uh, these aren't getting on a fuel yet, uh, I don't think. Uh, we'll go and check. I think there was some fuel waiting. He's got nothing yet. That is okay. Now I was spacing these trains out, but they seem to be working fine again. Oil trains still not getting that much either. Uh, right, what have we got waiting here? No, there is some fuel waiting. Which is good. I'll use up some of the stores that are in here. Uh, the oil is starting to come, the crude oil is starting to come down, so that's good. That keeps these trains here uh, busy. We've got four of these on, and each is carrying 540, so that's all good for that side. So the next fuel trains that come here will actually pick stuff up. And then the ship should uh, pick up the fuel. Transport it to Tokyo. We've got our own little fleet uh, in the sea just outside, uh, just between Asia and Russia. There, here's our uh, DPRK fuel train 300, 455 waiting. So he's all good. The Planck's train should have a full load as well, and that way we'll get plastic going to the goods hub. Uh, lots of plastic waiting there. Now actually a full load for this train that I've now got running on there. I think that's it there. There it is. The Tokyo uh, plastic train. We're running one of these Chinese numbers. Uh, we'll run another one of these in the fuel line up to Beijing. Which I will pipe in now. Now it's probably going to try and go underground. I'm not sure if I want it to do that. I want to sort of keep it going up. So I can sort of get over these lines uh, under here, or over these, and like sort of, we might just take a crossing, a level crossing for that road, but we'll see. And we'll start by getting our 160 Katana in new, because these Chinese trains are diesels. Uh, go with my old school 160. Right. Now if I go flat, does that give me a tunnel? It does, okay, hey, it going up slightly and then heading over here. Now that's a bit wild, that bridge. Yes, I don't want you to do that. Uh, bring it down here, there, and then we'll sort of hate it going flat for here, see if it gives me, nope, nope, it still gave me a bridge you see, but it looks slightly better, it's not going up, the bridge is not going up anymore, it's just because this section of land sort of dips down, and then it rises back up, right, here we may encounter some problems, right, we've already got a train alignment collision, what are you colliding with? It may just be this road. It is the road. So, the road can go. And then sort of bring it around. Keep it going flat. That's not interfering with any of them, so that's good. Now it may hate to come downhill quite sharp. Here, too much slope. Okay, this could be an issue. Uh, get rid of this depot for the moment. Right, uh, for where we were here. All right, let's see. Too much slope. Okay, bring this line back. And then we'll pipe it in for this side and see if it gives us 
see what the outcome is if we start from here. Right, go around. Go up to there. Now, have you joined? Or have you given me... No, you're good. Right, there we go. One fuel line from Tokyo to Beijing. Now, I'm only going to put one train on this, on this track. Because it'll take a while for the ships to deliver fuel. There's no need to run two. By the time the train picks up fuel, runs to Tokyo and then gets back, another ship should have delivered. And uh, the fuel tankers only carry 252 of uh, the liquid or fuels that they can transport. So there's no really on a need for it to be uh, to overkill the line. One train should should be sufficient. Now, hopefully, I guess you'll be getting my new RAM tomorrow. It should be arriving tomorrow. <coughs> uh, weather depending. Because the weather here, or uh, where I stay in Scotland, is actually quite bad. Just now, uh, I've not actually left my house in like two days. Uh, there's been a lot of snow, and now we're dealing with a lot of ice. Uh, the road is extremely... The roads are extremely bad, uh, mainly due to the fact that normally, normally we have snow plows and gritters that go out and take care of that. But on a Sunday, uh, the drivers demand that they get like triple time on a Sunday for going out and gritting the roads, and the local council basically turned and said, "No, we're not, we're not paying you <laughs> three times the amount you would normally get just to go out." on a Sunday, so uh, it turns out no gritters went all out at all today, so the roads are pretty atrocious. Uh, the house just down from me is on a corner, and uh, two cars have actually crashed into the lady, I know the lady stays there, and uh, two cars have actually crashed into her wall outside their house as they've been coming round that junction, because it just is pure ice and like it's on a sort of hill as well so hot cars coming down the hill and turning into the junction just kind of stop or make the turn due to the ice so she's gonna need a new wall after all this is finished <laughs> I'm just glad it's not my house my house is on like the straight part of the street so there's no issue the only issue is there's a lot of parked cars in the street that can present their very own little hazard when the road is covered nice. But hey ho, but on a plus note, because the roads are so bad, I do not have to go into work. <laughs> uh, they basically asked me to come into work, and then I said if the roads didn't, didn't clear up, then I wasn't going to go in. Uh, I'm near risking my car on my livelihood just to drive in, to sit in the office and do nothing. Because it's a hundred mile uh, round trip from where I stay to my office. So I don't want to be driving a hundred miles in snow and ice. It just seems a bit much. And companies don't pay you if you get an accident. My company certainly they get to buy me a new car if the one I uh, use gets destroyed driving through to work in uh, snow and icy conditions. I've seen it done before with uh, other guys that I work with. Uh, one of the guys was told he had to come into the office because uh, there was work for him to do. He drove in, this was a couple of years ago, uh, with the road covered in snow uh, he crashed his car, and then the first thing our work turned around and said to him and says, well, why were you driving your car in those conditions? And then he said, well, I was told that I had to come into work. So he basically got screwed over. And he went to HR and everything and complained that he'd basically been forced, told that he had to come into work. 
and the result that he damaged his car to the point where it was getting cost him a fortune to repair it and uh, they basically said well you should not have been driving in those conditions he was kind of in a no win situation but sometimes you've just got to learn to say no I mean everybody needs a job and needs to work but if anything happened to my car then I simply wouldn't be wouldn't it be possible for me to go on to work? Like there is no bus route where I stay that goes to the city I work in. So there you go. There's no much you can do about it, but hey ho. And it's often like, because the guys that are like uh, in charge in our office all stay in the city, and then they didn't understand that. Uh, People that stay out in the country, it's a totally different scenario. I mean, one of my bosses, my old boss, used to stay near where I live, so was, he knew. He knew how bad the road conditions could get in winter. And he knows that a potentially 45 minute journey into work could take up to two or three hours if the roads are bad with snow and ice. So he knew. But the guys I have uh, now, one guy's from Egypt and uh, doesn't grasp the concept of snow at all. Uh, the first time he'd ever seen snow was uh, when he, he came over to Scotland to work. So, but he doesn't understand. You tell him, here look it's snow and the roads are bad, I'm not coming in. and He doesn't understand that, doesn't get it. So, there's no much you can do. You're sort of fighting a losing battle. But at least tomorrow my new Ram should arrive, uh, depending on if the delivery driver makes it. Uh, I would not think less of him if uh, he didn't make it. <laughs> or there was no delivery tomorrow. That's, uh, I would completely agree with that. But hopefully I'll get my uh, new Ram tomorrow. I'll get that installed. <coughs> I also ordered another... Uh, SSD, a Samsung 1 terabyte, a 850 Evo, because I've got a 1 terabyte uh, HDD uh, hard drive, but the SSD I currently have got is pretty much almost full, just with the games, and I'd like to use the 1 terabyte just for using it for uh, for downloading mods to the Steam Workshop. I mean, mods do not take up a lot of space, uh, but holy crap, if you've got a lot of them, they sure do eat into your, uh, the space on your hard drives and your solid state drives. So I'd like to have just another uh, SSD just for, in case I want to download new games and uh, for getting more mods as well. So that's the line now finished. We'll go and select the train. Right, diesels. Uh, ooh, where are we? I know these things are here somewhere. There's the Russian trains. They look pretty cool, so I'm going to use them. Right, here's these. Now I completely forgot. I think we got up to this scene. So let's go with this scene. One and two. Uh, I'm getting used the tried and tested Russian fuel tankers when they get a mess about with the DPRK uh, tank wagons just in case the game screws up. Because <laughs> that was actually, they were actually the ones that I could use these. They're on my 16. Okay, they're on my 14. Where are they? Here they are. I'm going to use these slightly dirty ones. In fact, if the other ones are 16, even though they're German, uh, I've gone past them like an idiot. These are all German. VTG, that's a German. Motorex, I've seen that, but I'm not sure for its fate. Oh, Switzerland, okay. SO Egypt for some Petro China tank wagons that would be ace uh, any of you modders out there 
if you feel the need to make any Petrochina uh, tank wagons, that'd be great. I would certainly use them. I'm going to use these, even though they're German. Right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 320, that's fine, because each ship carries 256. So that should be more than enough. Uh, go new line. This will be Beijing. Beijing fuel train. Right now, push pause. I am actually going to save this because <coughs> I am paranoid. We'll make it one three eight point five. I am paranoid that this is uh, going to crash the game. Uh, if you'll notice in the last episode, the first episode of the Russia-Asia fuel line, uh, there was a part where I was selecting the trains over in uh, Russia. Uh, I selected one of the Russian tank wagons. When I did so, uh, the game crashed. But it was great because it had auto-saved just before that which was fine, which meant I could basically start off from nearly about five minutes off the point I was actually on. And you'll actually notice that, uh, hello, there's a bit for I'm selecting the train and the game is paused and there's silence and then uh, it flashes to a bit for, uh, I am still selecting the train but now trains are moving and a train rolls past underneath and two to torn and it's rather loud <laughs> and that's how you can tell the difference I forgot to pause it the second time around but I thought I did I thought I did quite well <laughs> right you are near changing nope I thought you were not changing right BEI fuel and train right now you've changed at Excellent. He has cleared the station. That's also good. Get rid of that. Now there won't be any fuel yet. Uh, no chance. How did I think these ships are that fast? Who are you? You are Russia Asia Oil Shipping. Okay. Let's have a look at this guy. It's got a picture of the former. Uh, is it the Chinese? or a former Chinese president, I think. I have no idea. If anybody knows who that is, <laughs> leave a comment. I should know who that is. Uh, I did more on studies at school. <laughs> right. This is our working fine. You've just dropped off fuel there. That is a fuel ship coming in. Excellent. Right, so that is working fine again. Now we need to check in Beijing to see if we need road, uh, a truck connection. Most of the industry is here. I think we'll be fine. I think just delivering to that will keep demand up. So we're good to go there. Uh, we should really get a uh, slag coming down here and going to one of these harbours. <coughs> that would be pretty sweet because I do have a construction materials plant over here somewhere. That's a farm. Uh, construction materials and then we can deliver it up to St. Petersburg and Moscow. I would like Moscow to grow. I don't understand why Moscow doesn't grow. Is it growing at the moment? No, it's sort of stuck. Why are you not growing? I mean, you've got a lot, of, you've got a few transport links. You've only got two train routes. Hmm, that might be something expand on. If we get a few more train routes out of there, it might grow. I mean, it does have a bus line that goes to St. Petersburg and it has two air routes 
with nobody, nobody on them. How about you? Did you have somebody? Seven. That's not bad. But I could get construction materials going from there. I'm at the wrong side of the map. So a train going to there with a good old slag. Half slag being shipped back. I should have set them to pick up anything. Damn it. Oh well. <laughs> I could have saved us a few ships. Now the tricky bit, really, is to get a station in here. Uh, let's see if I can get that connected. Now, hold on to your butts. This could be, uh, this could be interesting. Right, you there. Now, I we'll only need one platform. You go into there. Now, if you curve round wildly, three. Where do you sort of go? Okay, let's add 400. Oh, that's almost perfect. But is that in range? Uh, it's not connected to the thing. I can't actually see if it's connected to that. Ooh, we're close. We are very close. Ah, it's a pity this thing was here. If it is that. It's just a storage facility. Okay, go away, storage facility. Uh, I don't think we need this either. Or that. Alright, let's try that again. Rail. Alright, if I connect you to there, you're in range. You're colliding with that, but it's fine. Uh, go... 600. Right, now you're sort of curving round insanely. Let's bring it round slowly. Right there is where you're saying is enough. There's fine. <laughs> no, I could have delivered it to here. But it's if I want to do. I want to get its own separate line. I don't want to use too much of the routes coming into Tokyo. Because there is like goods and stuff that will hate to be delivered to Tokyo. I mean I should basically delete these tool factories and stuff. Because then I think I'm going to use them. We're just going to use the goods hub. Even though everything is made in China. I was watching a Cotton Gamer the other day. On a Twitch. As he was streaming some Tarkov. And he says, eh, obviously, like in Disneyland in Florida and Orlando, you saw heaps of these uh, Chinese tourists that were in the shops paying a fortune for like mugs and Mickey Mouse uh, stuffed toys. And they basically, <laughs> basically, all that stuff is made in China. So they were paying a fortune for something that. They could have got for pennies back home in China. <laughs> Basically traveling halfway across the world or around the world to get something that was made in the country <coughs> the country you've just uh, arrived from. <laughs> he thought it was kind of funny. I think that's kind of funny as well. Right, this is mostly going to be underground. Now there's a big hill here. This may prove uh, problematic. Auto save. Auto save, keeping the dream alive. We're in December 2nd of 1999. Uh, good year at 1999. How old was I then? About 11. 11 years old. 
Right. Uh, we need. Yes. Now I don't want you. You just take it easy, there, buddy. <coughs> Keep it going straight. Now this is not going to be able to align the train. There's too much hill involved. Okay, let's make it 400 and see if that will do anything better. There is literally no place this will go. And over here is no use because it's near in range of this. Now if I could get it there, that would be fine. Right, let's go and find my amazing uh, tool. Where art thou, tool? We've got a lot of assets. Ha, ah, this, this thing is awesome. Right, now, I want you to flatten stuff. Okay, we've got some weird cliff thing going on here, but that's cool. Uh oh, come on, keep going. That's a boy. <coughs> Pretty neat, S. The cheater's guide to marking completely flat areas. terrain there, we might have reached our limit now, we're still good, come on you, right, we might be good there, we'll fire the station and see how fit we've got left to go, right, just head over that way, okay, message received, I want this, give me my flattening tool back. <coughs> uh oh, no, we're still good. Come on, just a couple more would be fine. We may have reached our limit. Oh, I saw another in there. Right, let's try that. Nearly so close, right. This may call for just the standard uh, leveling tool. That's getting to look positively horrible. Uh, give me high. Make it extremely large. Bring that up so it's flat. Hopefully we should be able to get it in there. And then I will clean uh, this monstrosity up later. <coughs> right, we're into the new year. Let's see if it will go it. A Siemens Dispolic Box Press. Okay, another Porsche liveried uh, German electric there. These are seem to be the same train. Now I know for a fact there is a lot of this train in different liveries. Ooh, we've got the ice though. That's good. We've got a new tram. Uh, that would have been handy about two episodes ago. Now this looks like a speed dance carriage. It is. Okay. Ooh, speed dance. The very first uh, Transport Fever series I did. I had an American series. And I had the speed dance. And holy crap. It burned through money like there was no tomorrow. It was unbelievable.
So as soon as I try to attach it to this road, it won't go. Unable to align terrain. Why is that? <laughs> we are ridiculously close here, right? Down. Try that. Yes. Oh. That was stone nightmare. I thought I would delete these stones if I built the station over it. There we go, get rid of all this crap. The stones serve, serve the pup as well. Okay, I'm on right now. How much is left? One, two, three, four, five. Right, there we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Bring this back up. <laughs> right, slightly smaller station for the Slar train. Uh, but it does not hit it produce a mass amount of construction materials because it'll only be going to. Uh, I suppose I could hear Slarg also running to the goods hub. I'll hate to get that done as well. Alright, how does that look? Ah, it looks like a giant meteor landed next to those two steel plants. But it shall do for the moment now. You, sir. Let's continue on. And then go to uh, join onto that. Okay, the game's being awkward. Right, join onto that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Right, excellent. I will smooth that later. Well, let's get a train on. In fact, let's get a couple of ships on the go. Now, I'm getting the four ships again. I wish I should have set these for automatic. We could have seen uh, Slag back. Oh well. I shall remember that for next time. Right, by one, two, three, four. Right, now, which scene of these lines? It's already got three ships in it. This scene, so you're going to hate to come for set line all. Oh uh oh. Oh no, there we go. Phew. Right, go to there. And I was about to click on the train station there. That would have been pretty pointless. Go to there, because I think this is the the empty harbour. Uh, the ships are getting hey, some trouble manoeuvring through this section, I can tell you that for nothing. Alright, let's mark this. Uh, let's just go Asia, Russia, Slag. Shipping. Right. You are good to go. So these ships, those ships can roll out. We're getting fuel. Excellent. 28. 483 waiting. Uh, hold the bus. Why is that getting so much? Two ships must have delivered. That's what I think it is. I would say two ships have delivered full loads, and these guys, we're going to need some more of them. Uh, right. 
where is the depot now it was in the center of town somewhere was it in the center of town there it is eagle eyes there right freight uh, ridiculous amount of scanyas now <laughs> Right, we used them. They hold 28, 17, they hold 35. Let's get one, two, three, four, five of them. Set them on a line. Uh, Tokyo Fuel Road. Which is there. Push plate. Away they go, right. Now, the slag train. Hello there, slag train. Right. Uh, I don't need to do it. I may get a double track this because there will only ever be one train running on here. And I'll get slag going to the goods hub as well. Because the stone line. Although it produces a lot of stone, and each train brings in about 600 stone, uh, it's near enough to keep up with the demand for construction materials that we've got at the good hub. So extra slag coming in there will alleviate some of that pain. Let's go diesels. Now I might mark this just a single tethered train. Right, these have got two, four, five pool and power. The next things along are these three forty. Right, let's buy one of them. Uh, freight, something that can tick slag. Now the bulk carriers are up at the top. See, I like these little, uh, these guys, but they're German. This is Russian. Also German. We've used quite a lot of these. The Fall 167 for 1980. I'm going to go with this thing. Right, let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 280, that's fine. Because each ship will carry 252, set it on a line. It is going to go for here. And then it's going to go... Whoa! To there. And this will be Tokyo Slag train. In fact, I'll mark this Tokyo Harbour slog train. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at this guy. Just a sort of newer version of the Inns were already running. It's still pretty cool, I like it. We shall let him do his thing. Is he still coming out of the the depot? Yes, that's the last card there. Yeah. Let's speed her up just a touch. Alright, excellent. Let's get rid of this now. Boom. Boom. Excellent. Now I'll do all that sort of this week later. Here is a Tokyo to Mexico City flight. We need to be on it. <laughs> no surprise there. Right, so you'll be fine running slag to there. These guys are starting to get rid of some of the fuel here. Although this guy just dropped off. Okay, next ship coming in is transporting nothing. That's oil. Oil, fuel, uh, planks is looking good. Fuel, a bit of fuel there, good. Uh, 
you'd hate on you. That kind of sucks. If it's our way in here, 59 and nothing. Okay, so it's kind of working. In the next episode, we'll get a line going from here to that construction material. Materials plant, that'll be fine. And I'll then get construction materials going to Moscow and St. Petersburg. And all will be good there. That's a few more uh, cities We a few more goods being delivered. So that is good. I wanted to follow this train. But it's, uh, it's gone underground. <laughs> Let's see if we can find this train. Nope, he's underground as well. There he goes. Major bummer. 50 miles per hour. And he's double header. He should be going faster. Unless that's the train's top speed. It might actually be the carriage's top speed. But it doesn't matter, it will get fuel at some point and deliver it to uh, Beijing. Well, that is going to be it for this episode. If you did actually watch this and you'd like to leave a like or comment, please do. And if you'd like to see more of Tart in the future, then hit the subscribe button. I've been Danny Boy, this has been Transport Fever, and I will catch you later.